Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video we're going to be talking about burns and the rule of nines. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and let's get started. With burns, we're going to be focusing on typically the damage to the skin, the tissues, or the organs that are caused by either extreme heat, the flame, or even chemicals. So what we're concerned about typically with burns is that when we affect the skin and un the underlying tissues, we're going to have problems with a loss of our temperature regulation, a decrease in our sweat gland function and sebaceous gland function, and even our sensory function is going to be impeded. And what we're going to be focusing on today is just what are these different types of burns, what is the severity, and how can we figure out the rule of nines. So I drew this diagram up here. I'm pretty proud of it. I think it looks pretty good. And we are going to go through each type of different burn. Uh, there is one more at the end here, but we'll talk about that as we go through. So first, let's orient ourselves here with the skin and let's just go through our layers really quickly. So the layer at the top of the skin, the surface that gets contact with the world, what do we call that? That's our epidermis. And then we have our dermis, which is below that. The layer below that, which is where all of our fat is, is called our hypodermis or our subcutaneous. And then we have a muscle layer here and a bone layer. Okay, so as you look through it here, you can see our epidermis is this purple, our dermis is more of the white for this diagram, hypodermis is more of this speckly orange and yellow, then we have our myocytes for our, muscle bone, our muscles, and then our bone layer is just, I left it white. And I broke it up here into a couple different burns so that we understand what's going on with the burns and what is going to be affected. So the first one we have here is our superficial. And if you look at the diagram here, we have our superficial, and the burn is this little area right here. So it's pink, right? And it mostly affected the epidermis, which you can see there, and it's pink in appearance. So this is just the top layer of skin that's just been affected. When we start to move into more severe burns, like a superficial partial and then a deep partial, these two, you can think of them together, that they're going to go into the dermis. The superficial partial is going to be more of the upper layer of the dermis, and then the deep partial is going to be the lower layer of the dermis. So let's talk about the superficial partial. Superficial partial burn is going to go through the dermis, or epidermis and into some of the dermis. Typically, it's going to be pink or red in appearance, and the, the selling point, the key note you want to look for in your NCLEX questions is are there blisters? So when you're looking at your patient or you're reading the NCLEX question, you're going to be assessing, is this a partial, a superficial partial burn, I'm going to be looking for blisters because I need to figure out is this just a superficial or is it a partial, okay? And that's what we're looking for in this thickness. Is it a superficial thickness or is it superficial partial thickness? So in this one right here, we can see that it's pink and it goes into red. And if you imagine it, I left it uncolored a little bit so we can kind of see this whole area then being burned. And you can see what would be all affected all this epidermis and into some of the dermis here. So we're affecting maybe some hair follicles. We have some blisters going up. Then we go into our deep partial. Our deep partial is going to be the entire epidermis and deep into the dermis, hovering maybe right above our hypodermis. It's going to be red to white appearance, and there's going to be no blisters. So if we look here, there's no blisters on top. There's this burn. It's red and white. Obviously, the appearance would be up on the superficial. So just for the sake of this diagram, let's outline the burn here. So this burn here is affecting what a sweat gland, it's going down, it's almost into our hypodermis. And the last one we have here on our diagram is our full thickness, which is our entire epidermis and dermis, and it goes into our subcutaneous or our hypodermis. And what we can see here is it can be colors of white, yellow, red, brown, or black and it can include nerve damage. So these are the patients that the burn is so bad they actually aren't feeling any type of sensation because we have affected a nerve. So you can see here in this diagram, there is a nerve coming up and it has been affected by this full thickness burn. So I'm not gonna color all that way in. Awesome. And then we have one more that I didn't draw in here. That is our deep full thickness. That means it's gonna go through all the layers. It could extend to our muscle our tendons, and our bone, which is the 
biggest and most severe. So let's talk about the different types of burns and what can be going on, how can we get a burn, how are we going to classify them. So some classifications of burns, we have the first one here that's like an open flame or an explosion, and that can be called a dry heat burn. We have ones from like a scalding, hot liquids, or steam. Those are a wet heat burn. We have a Super Mario pipe there, or a pipe you come in contact with something that's really, really hot. What kind is that? It's a contact burn, like you burn your leg on the muffler. I'm sure you've done, one of you have done that before, I have. This right here is any type of chemical or cleaner you inhale or ingest or get it on your skin and you can create burns in the respiratory airway along with the skin. We have electrical. So if you get electrocuted, and then we have our radiation. Our radiation can be our sun or even some cancer treatments. So there's different types and different ways that we can get burns. And this is important because when we talk about the severity of the burn, we also need to know the depth of the burn, what's been going on, and also the type because some of them will impact other things in the body other than just the skin. So let's look at the severity. How do we figure out the severity of the burn? The first is the biggest thing and what the NCLEX likes to hit on is the rule of nines or when, how we figure that out is the total body surface area that is affected, particularly the percentage of the total body surface area. So it's initial, or, um, abbreviated here as TBSA. So we have the percent of TBSA and we also want to pay particular attention to the type of burn when we talk about this as well because you can have your sunburn all over your body and be okay, but if the burn is a little deeper and it goes into our dermis, then we could have some other issues going on, maybe we're dehydrated, things like that. So we're gonna be looking at the depth, because it's not only the type of burn and the total, but the depth. How many of the layers are affected? What layers are affected? Are we losing our sensation? Are we losing our ability to sweat? Are we losing our ability to um, move or breathe because we have pain and we have restriction? The location, so we have thick and thin skin here. So think about this, if a patient gets burned on the face, we have really thin layers on our eyelids, we get burned all the way through all those, we could be inhaling it into our mucosal and into our uh, respiratory tract. We also want to be thinking about are we burned on the torso where we have nice um, accessory muscles to breathe and if we now have burns there, it's going to restrict our breathing and we're not going to like to take a deep breath in. So location is really important. We also want to look at age of the patient. When we're assessing our patient and they have a, a deep burn, it's, it's on their face maybe, and we're going to be looking also at their age. Because with age, we're not going to talk about it in this video, but there's the rules of nines can go with different for adult, child, and then obese patients. So with the age, it can also change our percentages around. Our causative, causative agent or type, what was the type of burn? Remember with different types of burns, you can have different types of complications. For contact, it may just strictly be right with the skin or if you ingest a hot liquid, you can get a, a wet scalding in the mouth. You could have dry heat uh, burns, which you can ingest some, something uh, within the air or inhalation or smoke. Chemicals, same thing. You can have some type of infection in the respiratory tract. So we're always thinking about what was the agent? And then the most important one is electrical, because with electrical burns, you can actually have a iceberg effect where the outside is a burn that you can see a little bit, but within the inside of the body, there's a bigger burn or a bigger injury. And you want to also think about our heart runs on electricity. So if we are getting electrocuted, what are the other things that could be affected? Other injuries as well, was there something else that went on, like a fracture or a laceration? What had, what had occurred during this whole incident? Again, with respiratory, we're always concerned about breathing because when we have some issues or we inhale something or we have burning, we can have a lot of swelling. And when we have that um, infliction with our skin or with our breathing, that swelling can then cause an issue with us being able to breathe. Because remember, all of our uh, area of breathing, you know, our nose and our mouth are right here on our face. So if we get a burn on our face or on our respiratory tract, we kind of got nothing else to go for. So we want to make sure we're keeping an eye and assessing our patient on their respiratory. And then their overall health. Patient's overall health, do they have any comorbidity, comorbidities? Do they have any other breathing issues or problems with mobility and things like that? 
So with that, once we've looked at the type, at the severity, we have the depth, location, and age, we're going to be doing the rule of nines. And you may be starting to sweat already and be like, oh, the rule of nines, I can never get it, I never do it right. So let's talk about it. The first thing to remember with the rule of nines is that there will be no, let's put it in pink here, this does not include superficial. So just get that out of your head. Remember, superficial is just when the epidermis has a little pink appearance, so we're not going to be including that in the rule of nines. When you read a question on a test or you have a patient that you need to assess, you're going to need to know what the severity or the type of burn is on the depth, so that way we can consider our rule of nines. That way we can adequately figure out what was the total body surface area burned and how much fluid are we going to be giving back to them. So for me, what I like to do before, this is like how I take my tests. If I have a rule of nines question I know I'm going to be using, I draw my little stick man and I just write my numbers. So we have 9, 9, 9, 36 for the torso, 18 for each leg, and 1 for the groin. Now, if you don't like that, that's fine, but this is the way I do it. So that way, when I have a question that I really need to dive into, I can then look at those numbers as a reference. So we're looking at the total body surface area. We're going to get to 100%, and we have an anterior and posterior here. The first thing I like to do is put one for my anterior in the groin. Perfect, wonderful, 1% for the groin area. Then we know that we have head, right? And with our head, we have an anterior of 4.5 and a posterior of 4.5. Then we have our arms. We have our anterior 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, and 4.5. We have our torso, which half of 16 is 18 and 18%. 18 and then for the legs, because our legs are bigger than our arms, we have 9, 9, 9. So we have our rule of nines diagram drawn up. And remember, when we read some of the questions, they may indicate like upper chest. So you would just you know, take half of 18, which is 9, or the upper leg. So take half of 9, which is 4.5. So the rule of nines, everything's in nines, right? And we're doing this. Why? Why are we trying to figure out the total body, body surface area that's affected and burned? What is the purpose of all this? The purpose is to first, within the first 24 hours, our patient can go into hypovolemic shock. So they have all of these uh, full thickness burns or these deep partial burns. And we need to make sure that we are giving them fluid resuscitation because we don't want them to go into hypovolemic shock. Because remember, we have these issues here where we have sensory function that's decreased, sweat function is decreased, we can't regulate our body temperature. Maybe they have an inhalation injury or a burn on the face, they're not gonna wanna drink fluids, they're in a lot of pain. We also need to figure out this percentage of, is this patient uh, suitable for our burn unit? If your facility has a burn unit, there's policies put in place at a certain amount of per uh, percentage of TBSA that they need to be sent to that unit specifically. All right, Ninja Nerds, in this video, we talked about burns. In the next one, we're going to talk about how we assess our patient and take care of our patient and give them education with their burns. And as always, until next time.